Hello, welcome one and all to my very first community review, starting it off with Season 3 of Modern Warfare 2. Please welcome our guests, Replay Mode. Hi, my name is Austin with Replay Mode. And it's me, Poised. Hey, it's me, Poised. We got some killer feedback here. Thank you guys for reaching out and honestly just for being pretty fun individuals. For anyone that doesn't know, community reviews on this channel are going to be centered around giving your feedback, my opinion, and mashing it all up into a single synopsis of the previous season. We'll compare and contrast ideas. So if you want to be featured in the next community review, keep an eye out on the community tab on my YouTube channel or on Twitter and even in my Discord. Links are in the description. So let's all equip a thermal scope and get him all right into this. To start us off, if I had to summarize season three up into a single title, I would declare this season of Modern Warfare 2 as the official going dark season. A lot of people during the prequel Modern Warfare 2019 were really hoping for a nighttime seasonal event. Something to resemble the quote, Bravo 6 going dark from the campaign. Unfortunately, that never came to fruition until now. Modern Warfare 2 not only delivered us with a smashing amount of dark to pitch black maps to start the season off with, but another dreary map later down the road, but also a literal night vision goggle skin for free. 10 points for immersion. Thank you, Infinity Ward. I am personally loving it. We got lots of good stuff to discuss today. So let's kick this review off with my guest's general thoughts. The bread and butter of this sandwich. What do you guys think of this season? Give me a rating out of 10 as well. I think I would give season three of Modern Warfare 2 an eight out of 10, I think. It, I think, was a very solid season, jam-packed with stuff to the point where if the first two seasons were like this, I kind of think that we'd be in a better boat in terms of, like, community response to the game. Because we had three multiplayer maps, two battle maps, three gunfight maps, as well as actual, you know, gunfight, and tons of other stuff outside of multiplayer. My only real complaint is that the maps didn't fit with the theme at all. Like, the whole theme this season was Alejandro versus Valeria. Like, you know, they're they're fighting, which I guess kind of makes sense for gunfight, but none of the maps were in, like, Las Almas or anything. It just didn't really mesh with the whole overarching theme of, of the season, which isn't the biggest deal in the world, um, but it, it's the reason that, that I dock a, a few points to get to that 8 out of 10. Modern Warfare 2 Season 3. If I had to rate it out of 10, I'd give it a solid 7 out of 10. So it appears as though our average ratings even out to a nice 7.5 out of 10, and to be honest, I'd also give it a 7.5 out of 10. I think Austin really nails it when it comes to the theme of this season. It was totally an afterthought, rather than some seasonal groundwork. We were introduced to this season with a cutscene of Alejandro going after Valeria. Even the battle pass featured these two characters with lots of artwork portraying the rivalry and battle, I guess? We never actually got a conclusion to this conflict, not even in the season 3 raid. Heck, the raid ended with Hadir and Farah's bitter relationship. And maybe that's the theme, meeting your old friends or enemies. And even though season 4 is out while making this video, we still don't know where Alejandro and Valeria went. <laughs> like, all we know now is that there's this new operator, Nikto, from MDiv19 that's in this new city called Vondel. Seems like we got some more random, convoluted storytelling here. Almost like last year's COD, Vanguard. But despite that, I think this season was decently strong too. It's definitely the best one so far in terms of quantity of new content. And this isn't counting season four because it's not fully out yet. But quantity in a lot of people's minds at the moment is what Modern Warfare 2 lacks in the most. If season one and two had three new maps instead of the recycled ones that they did have, I think I would have made a lot more positive videos for this year's COD because I do enjoy the base game. However, I will say the quality of season 3's content in my opinion holds my rating back to a 7.5 as well. And speaking of the map's quality, let's further dive into the three new 6v6 maps they added this season. Take it away, Austin. Paleo's Lighthouse, I think, is interesting. I really like that they pulled the main building from a state and dropped it in here. I really do like the idea of these, like, remix maps. You know, I, I really do wish that they would do more of those, even, rather than straight remakes. You know, we, we don't need shipment again. 
but maybe shipment could have been part of a larger map or something like that. I don't know. Dude, I love that you bring this up. I completely agree with the style of remixed maps too. Back in Modern Warfare 2019, we were kind of getting these remakes of MWR maps that just released three years prior. Lots of people weren't that happy. These maps felt like we had just played them recently. And to be fair, while these maps weren't remasters, they did share the same aesthetics as MWR's maps, with some layout changes here and there. And these changes affected my appreciation appreciation of these MWR maps to the point maps I didn't like, such as Backlot, became maps I adored in MW19. But when our current MW2 did seemingly the same thing, I wasn't that thrilled. They brought back Shipment and Shoothouse for Season 1, both maps on a COD three years prior. They did change the assets on the maps and the layouts just very slightly, but I think the reason I was maybe okay with MW19's and not MW2's way of going around uh, making these remakes was because MW19's remakes were from a COD running on a different engine, and that game had a completely different movement system. You didn't even have infinite sprint back then. So for example, when Crash and Backlot came to MW19, they felt completely different, whereas MW19 Shipment and Shoothouse ported over to MW2 feel more or less the exact same. I gotta say they made the visuals and layout a bit better on these newer maps, but they also feel very repetitive due to their size. However, if we adopted this remix form, at going forward. Oh boy, I think we would have the perfect blend between consistent flowing new maps and nostalgic classic locations. Maps that feel like they're made for the new games while giving us a dose of familiarity. This was something that I have thought of too when remixing maps within other games like Fortnite and Minecraft a while back, using old locations in sections of new maps. Seeing this idea actually implemented into COD filled my little heart with joy. It's something that actually works, and I'm glad they did it. You guys may continue. Uh, along with that comes Palos Lighthouse. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And it's also just a fun and unique map. Um, you know, larger map that you have to think about your approach more going towards it, and it's just unique. It's fun. It plays actually very similarly to Estate back in the day, too. Like, it's very much King of the Hill. Everyone's trying to get to the top. There is like a lot of pointless water though. Like I don't know anyone who actually swims on that map. Um, I, I guess it's a cool aesthetic though, that the entire thing is on one contained island. You know, there's nothing out of bounds. Yeah, I don't know, I, I, think, I think I would give it an eight out of 10. Uh, it has the estate building from Modern Warfare 2, the original Modern Warfare 2, and it's just a cute little callback, I love it. Everyone seems to love the estate building callback, and I just think that's awesome. Hopefully Infinity Ward and other studios don't take this community's feedback for granted here. Also, while I never played the OG MW2 in its prime, I can confirm that Palos Lighthouse plays like a King of the Hill map, except instead of the main point of interest being located in a corner of the map, that cabin is now the exact center attraction. And I think it has some really good flow. And as Poise said, I also recall needing to think more about my approach due to this whole power position in the center. No matter the side of the map you spawn on, you're either going to counter snipe from various positions or you can flank around the sides. Personally, I would agree that there is so much water that most of it goes unused. However, I like the potential gameplay it offers. Maps like, say, Arklov Peak were too big for their own good, but because I think water is what makes this map seem bigger than it actually is on land, it appears to retain a good flow. I mean, from the cliffside, you can't even see the players rushing around above. But but from the dock side, you can climb up on the sunken ship for some really fun combat. And within the water itself, you're going to be forced to use a pistol, unless you're floating on the surface of the stormy waves, which entails some more intense idle sway. And given this map is set at nighttime, sniper scopes from afar are going to create their own little miniature lighthouses to avoid. Also, this is a type of night map I prefer. I'd rather one that I can see all obstacles in my way. I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. I just think it was a slight missed opportunity opportunity to not include night vision goggles on this map. Seeing clearly without night vision is a pretty good selling point for me, unlike our next map, but I think including them on Palos Lighthouse would have created way more balanced vision options. Which brings us to Black Gold. I mean, one thing that gives it that 7 out of 10 rating for me is the map Black Gold, um, Modern Warfare 2's only NVG map. It's just a really fun and unique map, and I can only hope that they do more like it in the future. Black Gold I had a lot of high hopes for. I wasn't super into the night vision back in 2019, but I, I didn't think I really gave it much of a chance. And now that I think I did give it more of a chance, 
I just, I don't think that it's for me. Like, and I think it worked better in 2019 because you had separate playlists, right? You had daytime version of the maps for quick play, and then you had a separate portion of the game where you could play, you know, Gunrunner or Azir Cave or whatever at night. But here, it's just this one map that only has a nighttime variant and it's just slid in with the rest of multiplayer you're signing up for one thing but when you get that map it's like a completely different feel i'd give it like a five out of ten i think ah our first divisive topic seems like we got a fan and a not so much of a fan of the night vision map as i said earlier i think a night vision would have been more acceptable on the map halo's lighthouse because there's good visibility without night vision there it would give us fair options black gold just doesn't have options like yeah i could get away without night vision in some areas if i have my monitor's brightness cranked up to the max but i mean come on you guys on your youtube mobile devices can't see a thing right now right i don't think so it's not even worth it most of the time for me too i think if i were to change this map i would have made it more like palo's lighthouse but instead of a thunderstorm by the ocean i think i would add the sandstorm el Mazra's city had going on at the time in season three <laughs> don't get me wrong i don't think a thick ass sandstorm like bo4's arsenal sandstorm would go down that well give us something more like palo's rain and the uh, Almazra Sandstorm because I don't think we need another thermal scopes of the map. I just think visually seeing a sandstorm blowing everywhere would be kind of cool at dusk or dawn, especially in some headlights and nightlights around the oil facility. Just mm, that would look nice. Just give us something not pitch black outside. Ideally for night vision, I would rather have it only required for smaller areas on maps. In fact, I would like black gold to be the inverse of what the map currently is right now. I'd rather the interior building be pitch black while the outdoors are not. The night vision itself I believe is an improvement. I like the newer shade of green. I think it's a little bit less straining on the eyes compared to MW19's. I would definitely agree with Austin that it was better when night vision maps had their own playlist back in MW19. Black Gold just plays so much differently from standard COD that I don't really think it has a place in Modern Warfare 2. It's actually like the only map I see myself backing out of because I just can't play it to get my long shots done man. You just can't do it on a map where everyone can see your lime green laser sight just hard scoping down the middle lane. The main downside of night vision maps for most people is probably the whole laser mechanic itself. MW19 and Modern Warfare 2 both have slower ADS speeds, so when you're further punishing people, it just kind of ruins the flow. However, I do believe this map plays pretty well in the one life modes. I find that it gets players to utilize the back spawn areas more, and I found some interesting areas, but I don't know if they really serve a purpose. You got this spot that you can jump to, it's on top of the pipes above the underground roadway. It's kind of hidden, but also not really. You don't exactly have any cover and the night vision makes you clearly visible. Then there's also this spot on the opposite side with a downward staircase going nowhere in particular. I thought I'd may as well point these out because I'm not really sure if this map feels like it was designed for 6v6. In my opinion it feels more like a warzone POI more than a map designed to play well. Pretty much like hydroelectric. And I did make a video on hydroelectric if you're interested but I think this is an okay map. I think I'd give Black Gold a 6 out of 10 as it stands currently. A forced green filter night vision in 80 5% of the map, laser beams that give away your position, and a semi-boring layout to lower this map score for me, along with a bad long shot potential. But yeah, speaking of long shots, what you all think of the Alboron Hatchery map? Um, Alboron Hatchery is also a fun map. It's probably the most generic of the other two, but uh, I still have my fun with it. Uh, the layout isn't as unique as the other two maps. Uh, but it's a fun map to have in the game. You know, I'll never complain with more maps, and it's a good map for long shots, I will say that. So I, I like having it. It's good. I actually really like Alber and Hatchery. It's not too big. I've seen a lot of people saying that it's it's too big of a map and the long shot spam is, is outrageous, and that is the case. There is a lot of long shot, you know, spots on the map. I don't think it takes it over, though, but I think it plays very well. Um, like, there is that one building kind of in in one of their spawns that everyone camps on top of to get long shots um but i don't think it's so bad like you can flank them pretty easily there is a lot of ways you know on top of that building um you can counter snipe pretty easily and there's plenty of the other like like the other half of the map the action's still happening there too so i, I don't think it ruins the map at all um i think it, it just creates a i don't know an interesting dynamic to the map I'm a, I'm a fan of it. I'm a big fan. I think I'd give it like an 8 out of 10. Um, it's pretty fun. It's one that when I see it's up, I, uh, 
I like playing it. Hell yeah. This was probably my favorite of the three maps we had introduced in Season 3. I also saw a fluff ton of hate when this map dropped. People on the godforsaken Twitter app and a few YouTubers were saying how this map was ripped straight from the campaign. I found that a little odd when most COD maps within the same game have always reused the map assets between modes. It's kind of like if you were mad that Dome was available in 6v6 and then the devs also allowed it to be playable in the survival mode. I think there's also just way better reasons to be mad at Dome in Modern Warfare 2. For example, we just had Dome in last year's COD, Vanguard. Another COD that cost us an additional $70 USD. But yeah, being mad that maps are playable across different modes within the same game is so counterproductive. Do you want more maps in multiplayer or should the campaign assets stay in the campaign, further hurting the core multiplayer experience? The same sort of issue happened with Kunstenar District. I mentioned this in my last video, Prestigious Key was kind of hesitant to say that Kunstenar was a new map because it was a section of Vondel. Like, I feel that that's an even worse take because Vondel and Kunstenar released at the same time. Meanwhile, Alburn Hatchery came to multiplayer like half a year later after the campaign initially launched. That said, we don't even typically play the campaign over and over again to the point we memorize the levels like we do in multiplayer. And they did make some major changes that I'll be showing off right now. To me, Hatchery is just a refreshing callback to that MW2 gillied up Mission. I played through the campaign maybe like once or twice, so I'm glad to see Hatchery finally reworked into multiplayer. I actually dig the aesthetic too. The colors are very pretty, and I may be alone in this, but the vibe a cloudy sky gives off on maps is something I tend to love. Maybe it's because almost every map nowadays has a scorching hot sun overhead. Or of course the, the sunset on the horizon. <laughs> and I personally don't feel this dreary vibe that others do on this map. I don't think it's dull, bleak, and lifeless. I think of this sort of cool bluish filter as a humid visual effect, which makes sense given the location, it's wet. I kinda wish we had more maps like it. As for how the map plays, surprisingly, I really enjoyed how it flows. I'm glad the terrain isn't flat for once. We got steep hills, high rooftops, this interesting maze of cylindrical structures here and here, and varying ranges of combat both indoors and outdoors. I also seen the long shot complaints, and to be honest, they really remind me of the same complaints Season 4's Kunstenair District has gotten. It just feels to me like these people didn't put in the time to understand the map. Infinity Ward designed maps like Hatchery and Kunstenar with high ground head glitches, but not to the point that they're OP. The high ground head glitches with both of these maps are pretty small, very predictable locations. The low ground areas offer way more positions to counter these rooftop hardscopers, so I think that evens out the lines of sight, bringing balance to the map layout. I think I'd also give it an 8.5 to a 9 out of 10. And as for why Hatchery is my favorite of these three maps, I think I just prefer the visibility it offers, while this map also has so much playstyle variety. If rooftop campers are your problem, you can very easily weave your way through the maze of funny shapes, dolphin dive down the steep hill, and then you can either chuck a drill charge at the ceiling, or you can parkour your way up to the roof from the outside where no one will see you. That way you can get the jump on anyone who's hard scoping with their narrow vision sniper scopes. And I'm glad I'm not the only one that understands and enjoys combat puzzles like this. I also think the map suits my favorite playstyle, a sniper plus SMG combo. I like rushing around while also being versatile, so that's why this map gets my praise. I think it just suits every playstyle, so no one is exactly left out either. Even the shotgun players got some small rooms to set up camp in. But yeah, that's about it for Elbron Hatchery. You guys got any thoughts on the new DMZ updates? I hear it's gotten a few new ways to exfil, a couple new armor pouches that grant perks, and even a barter system. We got some Minecraft level crafting in COD now, huh? I can't really speak on DMZ, but I will say I'm always happy to see a good new content for that player base, and that's where I'm going to leave it. Thank you, Matsuki, for having me, and I'll be going. I haven't played the raid. DMZ, I'm not into enough to, um, to really have an opinion. That's it. Bye. <laughs> no, you guys are breathtaking. Thanks, guys. It was good having you along for this journey. I hope we can perhaps do another one in the future. Get some more faces in here, too. But hey, please check out these homies at the end of the video. I'll leave their YouTube channels linked in the description. It's me, Poised, is just starting out in the COD commentary sphere. I do hope to see some great content from you in the future. And Replay Mode makes some banger map tours that I highly recommend checking out. Not just map walkthroughs, but a complete buffet of comedic exposition. And he does it for his other types of videos, too. Please support the 
homies, show them some love, and let's jump right back into the rest of this season and what it had to offer. <laughs> DMZ. So I didn't actually play DMZ in season three for some good reasons. To be fair, the patch notes did entice me, but once I saw that they were adding pay to win bonus mechanics to the item shop, I decided it was time to throw in the towel. You cannot make an extraction shooter fun when you're selling the very things that go against the genre itself. When you die, you're supposed to be punished. You're supposed to lose all your loot on hand. Then you either stock up on what's left in your inventory or you scavenge for more loot. But what these expensive store bundles did for the entirety of season three was guarantee people powerful pieces of equipment such as the UAV and two plate armor vest with zero effort required. Other than entering mommy's credit card into the store for blatantly OP advantages, of course. These are advantages you can't even earn in game. That is why I quit for the time being. However, Season 3 did have some other worthwhile things that I'd love to get into. Like the trophy event! Man, what a fun way to keep players invested throughout this season. It was an event included back in the Season 2 Reloaded update, and I'm glad they continued and innovated it a bit more. Season 3's trophy event started off with us collecting coins like dog tags and kill confirmed, and then we actually got to spend them in this unlock grid. You can see the two new operator skins you could earn on top of the grid rewards you could straight up buy. I'll admit the first skin was kind Kinda awful. I think it looks good except for the color scheme. I don't know why they messed it up this badly for a milsim operator, but you stand out like an igloo on a hot summer beach. You won't ever catch me using this skin, but the second one was a night vision goggle skin I mentioned earlier in this video. It looked really cool with the red goggles and the dark suit perfectly matches the nighttime maps in the game. I thought it was worth the grind. And then once the season three reloaded update dropped, the trophy coin stopped dropping. <laughs> Those rewards became locked. And then they gave us a chance to do a similar trophy challenge as Season 2's event. Just do each gun type specific challenge to unlock a new camo, and then once all types are complete, you earn a mastery camo. However, this half of the event in my opinion wasn't that great, because both camos themselves were pretty bland. Just look at Season 2's mastery event camo, then look at Season 3's. I mean, for Pete's sake, they even updated the previous season's camo to move. Like, it not only looks better by default, but they made it stand out even more with moving bits and pieces. I think they really dropped the ball this season. But for the final two weeks or so, they re-unlocked the previous trophy coin challenge and allowed players to pick up more coins than before. I think it went from 6 to 12 you could collect in a single match. Uh, depending on the game mode too, I believe. I guess they wanted to give more people a chance at getting that trophy hunt mastery calling guard, but bruh, it's only a calling guard. Who cares? I feel like they should know this by now. But oh well, this is modern Infinity Ward. The same studio that couldn't fix Marvel for 2's perk system that people are having a problem with since September of 2022. Nine months later, and still no major rework. It's also the same studio that teased OG MW2 peel eyes in Warzone, but didn't bring them over to 6v6 multiplayer. You know, the mode they were meant to be played in. Thanks. I love studios that hold back features they advertise their games with. I feel like a very valued customer. <laughs> Anyway, there was also the raid. Uh, definitely not one as good as Season 2's raid by a long shot. I kind of miss Season 2's raid because it had fun parkour sections. But yeah, this raid episode did have some good challenges to it while also featuring some of the most awfully glaring bugs. Can you spot the glaring bugs? Yeah, one of the most challenging areas not only throws a horde of bots at you, but also blinds the player too. Peak game design. But yeah, I did love the section where you could work as a team to navigate a room full of electrified water in order to press all these numbered panels in order before time runs out. My personal tip is to always press the numbered button once the timer is close to running out. That way it gives your squad some more time to run towards their own numbers to enter into their own panels. I did end up using a notepad IRL for this section just to assign everyone their numbers because it's not an easily forgiving task. However, the veteran version of this raid was also a surprise to me and my squad on MW2. Join the Snowy Fam Clan today. Cuff, cuff. We got a pretty neat animated lightning camo for completing this raid on veteran mode. What the heck? It actually looks kind of cool and worth the effort. Thank you! And I will say, it wasn't that bad of a raid, despite the glaring issues. It has some hard moments, but overall, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. Just for comparison's sake, Season 1's raid gets a 3 out of 10 from me, while Season 2's gets a 9.5 out of 10. So yeah, I'm giving it 2 points under Season 2's raid. As far as story goes, I don't really care that much, because it's kind of continuing MW19's story instead of MW2's. The plot itself is also very slow, like you get a cutscene at the end of the raid, and it gives you a bit more information, like more 
more than within the raid, but it's still like, eh. I do think this raid probably had the best ending cutscene because like Faris like freaking shot at Hadir. Like what? I mean, I get that she hates you, but oh my god. God. But yeah, I don't know if it'd be worth it for you if you're like just invested in the story because I could probably just summarize it up in a couple sentences. Task Force 1 for 1 found these underground bunkers. They're kind of going through them. They free Alex. They part ways. And then Farah meets Hadir and she's just hostile. Hadir has a deal and he does not share it with us in the cutscene. So we gotta wait for the next raid. Yay! And lastly, let's discuss the menu UI real quick. They updated some things for the better and others for the worse unfortunately. Create a class slots, and the camo categories are now more compact, allowing its user to view all categories and slots at once without scrolling. But they also made some awful changes that caused the user to take some extra steps. Now with the operator selection screen, you're forced to select your operator and then the skin you want to use on that operator. Before this update, you only had to select your operator and then you were done. No extra screens. You were still able to change your outfit before, but that was optional with the press of the customized button. Changing your outfit was not something you wanted to do every single time when you just wanted to change characters. I, for example, always use the Sasquatch skin for Reyes, but I'll often swap operators when I get a new cool one from the Battle Pass. However, after this update, I now need to constantly select Reyes and then the Sasquatch skin right after. And they aren't even organized, man. The skins I unlocked aren't all at the beginning of the list, and I can't favorite skins at all. And similarly, the Battle Pass has an issue with overly complicating things. Beforehand, you'd see your map of tiers unlocked. From there, you'd just select a quadrant to unlock more items from. Basically, it was the exact same menu as the collection system from past Call of Duties. But now, they auto-start you with a randomized quadrant, just for you to back out to the map and- Oh, 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 oh. No, you don't back up because that sends you right back to the main menu. You gotta press triangle or Y on the quadrant screen to view the map. It is such a pain in the neck. Cause like, I, I don't understand who this update was meant for. If you don't care about what your tokens are spent on, you could always activate the auto spend token switch at the bottom. It's so god awful. Please revert some of these Infinity Ward. I'd very much appreciate that. But yeah, that about wraps things up. I wasn't playing Warzone anymore as the updates in my opinion are are ruining the gameplay that Warzone 2.0 had originally launched with. Currently, I want to return to the backpack looting. I liked the 2v2 gulags, and I don't think snipers should be one-shotting anyone at full plates. It's really not hard to hit a second follow-up shot or just swap weapons to finish them off as they're gonna be at very low health after being hit with your sniper once in the head. One shot and you're out, snipers just don't make for engaging gameplay. I find it super annoying even in Fortnite 2. You're playing a one-life mode with loading screens that take ages for you to respawn. We shouldn't be deleting players with the press of a button. I want to load up a battle royale with the least amount of annoying random variables. I want to actually lose a gunfight, not die to some insta-kill BS. Realism, in my opinion, is questionable because any bullet to the head in real life is gonna kill you. Like, you see these ballistic faceplates? Yeah, they don't stop bullets. And snipers are already damaged powerhouses. So I just hate the fact that they changed them into nearly skill Killless insta kill beasts outside of Core 6v6 in a mode with armor, making the time to kill higher for every other player in the game that isn't sniping. Should shotguns just one shot kill in Warzone 2? I bet you all would just love that. Dying to campers because they're using their shotgun in the intended range. Just Wow. I feel like if you're okay with snipers one-shotting, you just should be okay with shotguns one-shotting, and at that point, I think you'd see why people just don't find one-shot snipers fun in Battle Royale. Oh wait, did you guys also know that co-op got a new experience? I didn't even notice it until now because I just didn't have any interest playing the mode, and it's kind of tucked away at the very bottom of the page. Let me know if you guys have played this co-op experience in the comments, and let me know what you think of this review from the three of us. Again, this was brought to you by Austin from the YouTube channel replay mode, and It's Me Poised from It's Me Poised, another subscriber of mine with his own channel too. Links to their socials are in the description. If you liked what you saw, check them out. Tell me what you think of season three and all of our opinions. And with that, I will see you in the next one. Peace out, homies. Oh yeah, we're better, we're better, we're better, 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 we're better, we're better than you guys. We're better than we're better, we're better, we're better. Man, you're the real Slim Shady, boy. Thank you. I love being the Slim Shady.